This AWPT video explains how to carry out a pre-start inspection. This does not replace training and should be done by a trained operator who has either been familiarized with the unit or has been given the time to self-familiarize. For more information, see the AWPT familiarization statement and the employer's nominated person. All machines are different, therefore it's important to refer to the actual machine operator's manual for machine specifics prior to use. The operator should be dressed appropriately as per a risk assessment and or site specific requirements. This might include the wearing of a hard hat, suitable footwear, gloves, goggles, etc. Unless the risk assessment states otherwise, this must include personal fall protection including a full body harness and lanyard. For more information, see the AWPT harness statement at awpt.org. Identify a safe place to do the pre-use checks away from other people, mobile machinery and vehicles, and without the risk of impact with overhead obstructions or power lines. Before work commences, only machines with proof of a current inspection should be used. Check the machine by following a logical order. There are checklists available as a reminder and instructions within the machine's operating manual. Starting with the boom in the lowered position, Working clockwise from the ground controls, visually inspect the machine for damage, cracks, leaks, damaged or missing components, excessive wear, and decal condition. Now check that the machine does not function without the key. For example, this can be done by checking that the key switch works and then that the other controls do not work with the key in the off position or with the emergency stop out. Then remove the key before proceeding with the inspection. Check the ground for oil under the machine. This can often be the first hint of a potential problem. Inspect the tires remembering that some solid or foam filled tires may have a bolt head showing opposite the valve. Check tire pressures on pneumatic tires as well and be sure to look for cuts, splits, exposed braiding and damage to tread or the tire wall. Look for cracked or damaged rims. Check the wheel security by looking for loose, damaged or missing nuts or retainers. There should be no leaking on either side of the wheel hub. Look for loose or bent components, pins and fasteners. Examine the wheel alignment and look for evidence that the wheels have been left in crab, four wheel steer or two wheel steer mode. Look closely at the slew ring for missing teeth or damage and for excessive movement of the boom. Also, has the slew lock been left engaged? Be sure to also assess the chassis decals and manufacturer's plate for important information, warnings, and directional arrows. Make sure that the catches and hinges are functioning properly when raised and secure when closed. Also make sure to check that the fuel level is sufficient for the day. Look closely at the hydraulic oil level. When you do this, you must make sure that the boom is fully stowed. Then visually check the hydraulic manifold for leaks. Check for any loose, damaged, or exposed wires or any damaged or leaking hoses. If there's a slope warning device fitted and accessible, insert the key, turn to the ground controls, and pull the stop out. Be sure to inspect this device for full free movement and function. Then remove the key and re-engage the stop. Next, check the power track that it's securely attached to the boom and has no damage to the tracking links and hoses and is free of debris. Be sure to look closely at the boom for any structural or weld cracks, damage, or misalignment. Check pivot pins and securing fasteners, and don't forget the wear pads. You're looking for excessive wear or potentially any missing pads. Look for any leaks, frayed, or damaged hoses. A little bit later in the inspection, we'll check around the base of the main ram. Also check for pins, bolts, and fasteners, and make sure those are all in good condition. Next we'll move to the basket. Now the basket should not show signs of structural damage or have any cracked welds. Make sure to look closely at the decals to see that they're clear and readable and confirm the safe working load, maximum number of persons allowed in the basket, and the safe wind speed. Make sure that any gate opens either inwards or lifts up and that the gate or opening closes securely and has not been tied open. Remember not to forget to check the black box. This is the machine's document holder where you'll find the manual of responsibilities and the operator's manual. Now continue checking the wheel area and chassis base as we've done previously. Depending on whether you're using a diesel, electric, gas, or dual fuel machine, you'll need to do the appropriate checks. Inspect any radiator coolant level and the hoses associated with it. 
Be sure to inspect the battery as detailed in the machine's operator's manual. As we did previously, remember to check for damage or leaking hoses and cables. Ensure that the catches and hinges are functioning properly when raised and secure when closed. Also examine the counterweight area for the condition of any decals, pins, limit switches, audio alarms, and beacons. Now we're ready to move to the ground controls. The ground control decal should be clear and visible for each control. Insert the key and turn two ground controls. Visually check around and above the machine for hazards and personnel who might be affected during the function test. Start the engine, elevate the primary boom to just above horizontal, and check that the emergency stop works. Then, leaving the emergency stop in, proceed to inspect the main ram and boom and chassis parts that were previously difficult to access with the boom down. Inspect for damage or leaks around the hoses, o-ring, pins and retainers, limit switches, structural bolts and welds. When satisfied, return to the ground control function test. Visually check again for hazards and personnel who might be affected. It's important to remember that you must test all functions starting with the auxiliary power or the emergency lower to lower the machine. Then restart the machine engine and function test the slew left and right. Telescope in and out. Basket slew left and right. And basket level up and down. Continue until all machine ground controls have been tested and are fully functional. Then stop the engine, pull the emergency stop out, and turn the key to the platform control before proceeding to the platform control function test. Remember to use three points of contact for access to the platform through the platform gate. Attach and adjust the harness to one of the anchorage points provided. The ground control's decal should be clear and visible for each control. Ensure the directional arrows match the chassis direction. Make sure the engine does not start with the stop in, then start the engine. Ensure that the function enable works. Now this is sometimes foot operated and sometimes hand operated. By moving short distances, now make sure the drive functions are working properly, such as forward and backwards, steer left and right, and the brakes. The drive should be high speed with the boom in the lowered position. Then check all other modes of steering. Be sure to look up and watch for overhead hazards before raising the boom. Then lift the primary boom just above horizontal and check that the elevated drive speed is functioning properly. Next, stop the engine and function test the auxiliary power or emergency lowering controls. Then restart the engine and check all the boom functions to ensure they're working properly as well. When testing these features, remember to always look in the direction of travel prior to movement. When the boom is slewed around, verify the proper functioning of the warning and drive enable features. Then check the basket rotate and basket level function. Where oscillating axles are fitted, drive the boom onto a test gradient as per the manufacturer's manual. This will help ensure that the oscillating axles are functional and that the wheels remain in contact with the ground. Once satisfied, park the machine on firm level ground. Having completed the visual and function tests, the machine should be safe to use. Don't forget to document that you've done the inspection. Always refer to the manufacturer's manual for specific machine details. If any defects are encountered, stop the machine, isolate, tag, and report to your supervisor immediately.